we will get uh, a crying tip. And we call it the crying tip of the month. And that's where we come <laughs> from uh, police officer uh, Medeiros. And uh, Medeiros, would you give us your crying tip for the month? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Um, I guess in terms of very might of everything's been happening, in terms of the type of robbery that we had recently with the elderly lady. Um, I've said this before, but I'm going to add a little bit something to it. I see the number one thing that would protect yourself against robberies and some sort of crimes, random crimes on the street, would be to awareness. Have awareness of your surroundings. Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't walk around like a cell phone zombie. Uh, that is, while that is true for some of us, it's actually more true for the younger um, members of the public, teenagers. Um, teenagers are being targeted for their cell phones, and a lot of times they're being caught off guard because they're not paying attention to what's around them when they're in their cell phone. The second part of this um, is, I would say, instincts. Pay attention to your instincts. Now, I know that this is not really said very often, but your instincts are actually a very powerful thing. Um, it may be as simple as just a little voice in the back of your head saying, uh, something wrong over there. Or it could be something a little bit more involved that maybe you don't even, you don't um, understand yourself. For instance, if you're looking at a person and just some random person on the street, you need their, their body language, the way they look, the way they're looking, the way they're moving, the way their face is, maybe you get a smile, maybe a frown, maybe somewhere in between. Uh, these types of things, your eyes see this, they register it, and whether you and unconsciously you get a picture of what this person is about. Uh, and this this um, unconscious picture might be enough to tell you that something's wrong with the person. So you should pay attention to those feelings. Um, and if you have those feelings while on the street, then go somewhere public if you can. Go to the store, um, go to a police station, go to a fire department, go somewhere um, until you feel that it's safe enough to continue on your way. Um, in the case of the elderly lady, unfortunately, there, she was already at her home. So there was really, in that particular instance, there was nowhere for her to go or change direction or anything that effect. She was basically already trapped by that point. Um, but in your case, you might have that. You might be able to go somewhere public. So just pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to your inner voice. Thank you very much. So every month we're going to do that because we need practical uh, explanations the things that happen every day and what you should do about them. Um, before I go into the neighborhood reports, I will go into the election. Uh, we are up for election. Uh, the election will be held in June. Um, mm -hmm. In June. Up until now, this is the last day. If you didn't have uh, three uh, visits uh, to our meetings, then you're not eligible to vote, to second, uh, or to run for office. But if you've got your three uh, attendance at our meetings, between uh, April and March of uh, April of last year, March of this year. If you've got three attendants, you're eligible to vote. If you live in the community or if you work in the community. Okay, so those are the two factors. Um, tonight we're gonna just pick uh, an uh, election committee, a nominating committee. And anybody, and anybody can be nominated for any of the seats up here. But as I said before, and uh, up until now, uh, you were not being called upon to do very much. But today, it's a big, it's a big difference. Kay Cardona, she's in charge of the Columbus Day Parade, of organizing the group, and uh, contacting the Morris Park, and getting people to march. We'd like to see some people march in the Columbus Day Parade that represent this council. Mm -hmm. And Kate Cardona is gonna uh, undertake that. Andrea Siegel 
is uh, she's doing the Kalesi run. Now she does this anyway, but now she's going to do a lot of the ground back. Uh -huh. And uh, the shirts, getting the word out. So she's going to be doing that. Stand up, Andy, so they know who you are. Now again, we need volunteers. And all of these committees will need volunteers uh, from the membership. And, um, well, Hazel Mira is not here, but um, she's in charge and the chairperson uh, for our uh, um, Night Out Against Crime. Now, she does this anyway, but now she's going to be asked to do a little bit more in our Night Out Against Crime. And last but not least, Stephanie, who's also not here, will uh, be the chairperson in our food collection program. In the meantime, you know what Sylvia does, he's this is the first. He's gonna be doing the breakfast. He's the chairperson for that committee. Um, since I've got chair people for all these committees, I'm gonna sit back and, and relax. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No, my biggest job is, is to raise funds and, and, of course, to be part of all these committees. Um, anyway, any one of these offices uh, are up, including the uh, office of the chairperson or the president of the council. So uh, you just have to be nominated by a member of good standing, and uh, it has to be second by a member in good standing. Now, the nominating committee will post the list of all the names uh, that are uh, eligible to vote. If your name is not there and you know you've been to five meetings and your name isn't there, then you'll talk to him and you'll straighten it out. You'll look at the book yourself and you can locate your name and how many times it's been here. Um, that being said, our nominating committee this year is going to be Jean uh, DeFrancis. Jean, stand up for the next two hours. And you know, he's the president of the uh, Allerton International uh, Merchants Association. And uh, his lovely wife, Veronica. And she's going to be with him. And it's good when you get a nominating committee to have people that are working together anyway, because this is a lot of work to put this together. Either Blitzen knows it and says, whatever well, you do, do not ask me to do that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was warned. So, um, we like to get people in clusters so that you can work together, you're close by, you know each other. And uh, again, anybody that has a question about any of this will, of course, take it up with Gene, and you'll have access uh, to all the names on the books. Um, and Gene, would you pick your third member, okay, and somebody you can work with, and uh, that'll be your team, and you'll let me know. That takes care of that. Do I have any questions about the election? Okay. Does it look like a bother me? He's not bothering me. I'm used to everything. <laughs> okay, let's go into the neighborhood reports and the first people that we're going to have. Oh, before I forget, is Mimosa Dodgy still here? Uh, I guess she wasn't feeling good and she stepped out. But Mimosa was uh, chosen as uh, one of the honorees. Uh, this year, a woman of the station. And she she definitely deserves it because she works very hard uh, to protect women, women's rights, um, women that are abused, and to try to keep families together, um, raising money, raising food. So she's been doing this for a number of years and she, she rightfully deserved it. Sorry, she left already. Um, but she is a great person. And uh, so I'll ask first the clergy council to come up. We had a clergy meeting before this meeting. We usually do uh, every other month. Um, 
So I saw Rabbi Ezra. Okay. So Pastor Goody, he keeps sneaking in. So Pastor Goody is the president of the clergy council. And uh, so I'm going to ask him to give us a little blessing, say a few words. And like he tells me, make sure there are a few words. <laughs> I'll be as long as you love. Um, I was just sitting with our clergy, some of my friends back there. Man, if we can get our parishioners out like this on a rainy night. <laughs> I want to thank the community, uh, number one, for our fellowship dinner that we had a couple of months ago. Thank you all for your participation. Uh, we're working right now, our event committee is working on having a breakfast. Uh, we're having a breakfast before nine, uh, clergy council before nine, please, and breakfast. Tentatively, the date is June the 8th, from 9 to 11, and uh, we hope to have, by next month, we'll have, we should have specifics. One of our things that we're trying to get this year to come and be our keynote speakers, our police commission on meal. So by next month, we should have a um, uh, final <coughs> analysis on everything, all right? So, Again, something we discussed on today. So, again, June the 8th, so we just put a rank around. That's a Thursday, June the 8th, and again, we'll give you further updates on that. All right? Um, one of the things I do want to say is this, that our clergy council is growing. Over the last two months, we've had eight new members. We had five joining the night. So I do encourage all of you that have your, 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 your priests, your imams, your, your, your fathers, you know, your priests, your rabbis, please tell them that we have our clergy council, which is up now, and um, we're doing very well. We have now over close to 35 page members of our actual clergy council, so we encourage you to be a part of it, and even if you're a lay member and want to be a part of our clergy members, we meet quarterly. We only meet four times a year. Uh, our next meeting is going to be June the 27th. Tuesday, June 27th at the precinct. All our clergy is held 5 p.m. at the precinct. Right. Um, last but not least, I know the last meeting we were scheduled to have the SUV stakeholders appreciation, um, but due to the snowstorm that came, we had to postpone that. The SUV stakeholders appreciation, which I was in the client, and we were Mark Jones, I was part of, uh, will be next Wednesday, next Wednesday, April the 5th. That's going to be held at Fellowship Tavern after 1, 2, 3, 4, he's going to roll. We do have the flyers in the back. The reception is from 6 to 7, and the program is from 7 to 8. And this year, last year, we honored a whole lot of most of our community members we honored. Um, but this year, we have specific people that we are honoring on next week. Um, so again, we do invite the community, because you're a part of that. I know a lot of you have been out there with us. We've done these rallies. You haven't seen us doing uh, rallies in a long time, because there haven't been no shootings in our targets. So that's a good thing. We got See my face when I'm asking y'all to come out and support us. Also, just one last thing is that on our breakfast, at our breakfast, and I see a lot of our community leaders here, uh, the clergy committee, the event committee have decided one of our, our community groups. So all of our community groups are part of our 49 precinct council. We want to honor you on that day at our breakfast. The tickets will be $15 to go to our breakfast. $15 to get on June the 8th. We want to honor each group. We want to honor each uh, community group. So please, again, next month, if the Lord's will, I should have uh, tickets and, you know, give you further information. Thank you. Wait one second. One second. One second. He also uh, is uh, in the clergy council. He's also raising money uh, for a scholarship. And uh, one of the biggest things in, uh, that happened in today's meeting yeah. was this young man new member. He just joined. And he just joined the clergy council. <laughs> and he said, well, our organization pledges a thousand dollars. And that's what I mean about the membership. He does a lot of other things too. He has a coat giveaway. He has a food giveaway. Um, when you look around and you see the good things that a lot of good people are doing, that's why we're strong. That's why we're such a strong community. And when this young man stood up and he said, you see, I'm so old, I can call anybody a young man. <laughs> but he stood up and he said, we pledge a thousand dollars just like that. And uh, we really appreciate it. Do me a favor and just stand up in one minute and just make sure that I get your name straight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, my name is Shubir Gul and uh, I am the Chair of Brown Security Council and I am the Chairman of the Muslim Foundation of America, all Muslim organizations. We guys do the charities of our neighborhood, the co drives, uh, hard uh, uh, meal. Uh, if you guys allow us, any church, they need any help, you know, the food drive. So we guys will provide the food, or the uh, soup kitchen, or the clothing, so once a month. And uh, after two months, we will have the big, huge 1,000 bags, backpacks, school bags, giveaway. If you give us uh, suggest four locations, so we will provide you 1,000 bags. So we work with the community, build our community, and we build the bridge with our community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our first organization, and these are organizations, in case you haven't come to our meetings before. Uh, we asked uh, some of the leadership of the organizations. Um, and I just remembered that we do have a domestic violence person who works in the 49th precinct. And um, he introduced himself to me before. I'm glad that he's here. And he wants to talk a little bit about uh, Safe Horizon. So that's Edson uh, Segovia. Edson Segovia. Thank you guys. My name is Edson. And like you mentioned, I work for Safe Horizon within the 49th Precincts. Basically, my job is to call victims of crime, like the harassment, assault, domestic violence, and just give them referrals and social services such as financial assistance, housing assistance, shelter, if they need it, counseling. You know, sometimes victims get traumatized when they go through, you know, an intense episode and we go for counseling as well as legal services. If they're interested in that, we also provide a program called Project Lock, which we send locksmiths to their apartment and we change the locks for free in case the perp has, you know, the copies of the apartment. And we also help them um, understand more how uh, the order protection works. So if you know a person that's in domestic violence and they need someone to talk to, you can refer them to me or my partner Minata, who couldn't make it tonight. My phone number, if you're interested, 718 918 2080. And I work there Monday to Fridays, 12 to 8. And my partner Minata works there. Monday to Fridays, 8 to 4, and her number is 718-918-2079. Thank you. Okay, okay our, first, uh, our first group organization is uh, Mars Park Association, and uh, who's going to do that? Lefty. Lefty Estacion, where are you going? And do call me lefty. I just want to let the captain know that the years that I've been doing volunteering work for 32 years, um, part of it was a little bit in the Morris Park and the uh, Venice Community Association, and 26 years been in the Morris Park Association and being a uh, coordinator of the patrol and working with these officers. It has been an honor and very, very happy to see that they cooperate with us every time I have. Sometimes they tell me, how come you don't say the things, the crimes? I don't have to. I got certain people that I call in the form I it so that I don't have to have somebody here hearing me say something and then go out there and might do some justice, which I don't want. But the idea that we're here to help and the officers like Jay, David, and many police officers and even the guys on the bikes, they're always out there doing the right thing for the Morris Park Association. So with that in mind, as everybody knows, I do do the coordinating and the patrol. And I thank God now that instead of six days a week, I have a guy that's and another partner that's going to join and do the Sunday patrol within the middle of April. So that's going to be seven days a week. So with that in mind, I thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. 
Okay, the Van Nuyen Alliance. Bernadette Ferrara. Mm. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Bernadette Ferrara, and I'm the president of the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. Um, I just have a few questions. Um, Captain, any uh, additional updates on, or any additional to tag on to those burglaries in, in Van Ness that you would be able to update uh, us on? Like I said before, that uh, individual, Vince Rosario, um, just got released two days ago, which is very surprising to me. Oh, he got released? He got released. He was incarcerated. We, we locked him up, I guess, about a month ago. And uh, now he's been subsequently released. Um, that concerns me because oh. he did a lot of damage on him. Uh, I mean, he contributed to the spike in burglars and his command. Um, but, when we locate him again, he'll be rearrested on another burglary charge and ultimately put him away from that one. Uh, we, need, we need some help um, in the prosecution there. Um, but outside of that, Bergs have been stabilizing in the command tremendously. We've, we've seen a reduction, so I'm starting to get down to the even <coughs> year to date. Where um, I think I'm, like I said, three over. Um, but Year to date, forty-three um, percent of my burgers current Van Ness. So I have dedicated offices in the overnight um, down there in regards to these burgers, um, and that includes you know, Sector Adam and Sector David. Uh, by the light of lighting Kruger, I know I just took another burglary over there, Bronx Park East, uh, which I think may be a pattern. Um, so if, if I'm going to convert, it's going to be in that area. So I am focused in that area. Uh, I have my resources on the overnight. I'm, I'm analyzing the crimes. I'm looking where the burglaries are happening. And I'm putting officers down there. It's very, some of those streets are one-way streets, dark, dead ends. Yes, uh, yes. And, and that's... Especially the dead ends. Along. Yes. <laughs> the dead ends, uh, there's stuff going on there that only God knows what's yeah. going on. And to have some sort of um, police presence, even if it's you know just to um, just to peruse back and forth, it really does make a difference. It did in the past, um, you know, and it's something that um, if, if it could be continued. That would be wonderful. Yes. And since there are evening, um, we have a lot of those uh, undercover police there. Mm -hmm. um, has it been? What we've noticed is that there's a lot of commercial vehicles that are on the street after nine o'clock. Um, like that budget rent, that huge budget rent a rent yeah. truck that's been there. It comes and it goes. Um, we looked at that truck. That that was a truck that um, I know it might be problematic to you, but I think it was was it legally hard? We, we we couldn't do anything with it. Okay. It comes and goes and moves around. But we did do some. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to park in any a truck is not supposed to park in any residential street between the hours of nine p.m. Between nine p.m. and five a.m. According to the New York City traffic rules, right. that yeah. commercial vehicle can only park there maximum three hours at any other time, including the nine p.m. to five a.m. on businesses and non-residential streets. Here we go. I'm going to jeopardize you, and you're going to summon for me. But unfortunately, the reports I'm getting is. They couldn't summon the truck. Trust me, when I tell you, my officer would love if, to do it. If it's and or tell, um, if it's the reports I'm getting that it is legal at this time. It okay. might be illegal sometimes, but we're not catching it when it's illegal. Okay. Okay. My other my other question is, um, um, I understand that the street mechanic on yes. the street has been locked up. We arrested him, but he he might be subsequently uh, released. Okay. Um, okay. He was arrested. Okay. Was he arrested for doing that or for something else? Just curious. Um, no, no, no. I think I thought it was like auto stripping or something like that. I gotta look at the exact charge. Okay. Um, but it was car related. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I'll be t I'll be giving Jay because we have another street mechanic on Baker now. <laughs> so I will be sending Jay. Yeah. 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 And then um, one wow. other thing is. Um, I know that there was an issue which happened in front of my house involving my 11-year-old tenant's daughter. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if that was, if there was any 
um, with somebody who approached her. Right. Right. Yeah. So I was just wondering if there was any update on that. So, after our last email correspondence, we have no update in the, in the identification of this individual. Huh. Um, I know they were doing a camera cam, so I know they interviewed the, uh, the child as well as the mother. Um, so they take it very seriously. They weren't um, they're not responding to the complaints, but we have no update on this. Um, if anyone in the community recognizes the guy, I guess we can, um, we should we should have probably had a uh, informational flyer uh, at this meeting. I don't know if there is one that they that actually captured this individual, um, but I'll look into that and, and we should be that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Well, that was long, but those are the kind of questions that people should be asking. Not making statements, not making speeches, but those are the kind of questions that you want to ask and get answered. Okay. Um, the Home Parkway Community Association, uh, Neighborhood Association, Show. our own Andre Siegel, no, Edith. Oh, Edith Blitzer. Thank you. traffic, congestion, um, uh, block in a box. 
I could send police officers out there to do enforcement, but it's not going to solve your traffic problem. It's volume coming to the center. Police officers maybe can give out an enforcement or issue summonses in regards to blocking the box. Okay, we, we, can, we can do that too. But I, do, I think it would be a temporary fix. Um, what would really, I think, could help would be traffic agents. Uh, unfortunately, what's going on is um, I contacted the traffic agents, especially about Allenton. Um, they're not coming out unless you have a construction issue. Um, they only have, they have limited resources unless it's a priority issue or maybe it has some political backing to it. Um, traffic agents are probably coming out. Um, I have a balancing act to do. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not a, uh, it's a minor issue. I understand it's very frustrating. Um, when I can do it, I can get an officer over there. I just don't know if it will solve. I like to solve problems. I don't like to just put a bandaid on it and then it just pops up again. Um, so I can send officers over there to do that, but I don't know if it's going to solve. I, I think at the next meeting you're going to say it to me again. Um, I just thought that maybe if I wrote a map, you could say don't tell them. Right. I I can focus in that area. We we put that down. And we can start issuing the uh, the double quarters. Okay, we only have about 10 minutes left, so uh, please, just hit the important parts and then go back and forth. Um, is anyone here from Parkside Housing? No. Okay. Bronx Coops? No, Pat Adelaide. Allerton Homeowners, Rob? No? Uh, yeah. South. Yeah. yeah, I just want to say that, that Ralph South. Lanza has right. some parking oh, issues. Oh, South, go ahead. Yeah, Ralph Lanza has some parking issues. He said he was going to see the captain about it. You know, I don't know. He collects the dues, and uh, he said he was going to pay you a visit. So, okay, thank you. Ouch. <laughs> okay, Ralph is not here. Schweitzer is from Bronx Park East. Uh, Allerton International, Gina Francis. Thank you, Joe. Uh, through you, actually, if I can wish uh, Bernadette and her family sincere condolences and thank you for coming out. She lost her mom uh, this oh. week, so thank you for your dedication to us and being here. Um, on what Edith is saying, Joe, also through you, if I could talk to the elected officials. Uh, regarding the traffic, if you have good working class people, they can't move three blocks with within 20 to 30 minutes, we have an issue. Mm -hmm. And you guys are right, you know, you can't just ticket it. We need the traffic agents there to help direct people into funneling onto our highway. Otherwise, we need to reconstruct anything. So this is a, a, a city council issue. So if Jimmy Baca and Richie Torres can just listen and work with us on this, because I have a photo that I, it was my main issue today, that in a, a truck that's been parked out on Bronx, whatever, that's a concern now, but I'll get to that. Um, those are the two major traffic issues. It's backed up, and it, and, and it gets worse and worse mm -hmm. depending on the weather. If you go all the way mm -hmm. up to Holland and Wallace Avenue, it's, it's insane right now. And it, it, it's incredible on how quick it's resolved with just one traffic agent saying, you go now, mm -hmm. you go, you go. And everything flows, and everybody gets to work, and everybody there's less stress. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they're going to leave, and then our stores are going to suffer, and, and it's going to cycle. So we need to work on this. We need to make this a priority. And it's not on our police department. It, it's on you guys. So please, uh, get us a traffic agent. Find the funding somewhere. The money's there. We, we all know it. We read the paper. We see that money is being spent on certain things. So hire two people so they can help Bronx Park East on Pelham Parkway and on Allerton Avenue. Um, regarding regarding the, uh, the commercial um, tractor trailer on Bronxwood, it's a concern because usually he's in and out. He's always there, but now it's been there for a couple of weeks now, um, and so I, I'm concerned if the truck driver's okay. I don't know if the family's reaching out, because I know generally he sleeps in the truck, um, from what I'm told. I've never seen him come in and out, but usually he's staying, he, and he, he sets up shop in there. So um, if there's any word on that, it's definitely worth looking into. Yeah, it's a trailer, so he can sleep in the bed, and that's in the past what 
has been done, but I've never seen it personally, so I don't know how I